Six-year-old Kinsley White, her mother and father, were shot on Tuesday after children from the neighborhood walked into this man's yard to retrieve a basketball. 24-year-old Robert Singletary was heard yelling at them. Then adults, shortly after, shots rang out. He just came back out with a gun. He didn't care who he shot, who he, who he, who he killed. He was out to kill any and everybody. A bullet grazed Ashley Hildebrand's elbow. Her husband was shot multiple times, running to their six-year-old daughter's aid. That six-year-old, Kinsley, was shot in the left side of her cheek. It stuck in her cheek. It didn't go all the way through her mouth. Or how, it, how it lodged the way it did is... God was with her. This isn't Singletary's first run in with the law. Gaston County court documents reveal on October 4th, he claimed his girlfriend hit him with her vehicle in a domestic dispute. Then on December 2nd, police arrested Singletary for allegedly hitting the same woman with a sledgehammer and holding her against her will. He was later released on bond. Singletary's now facing several charges, including four counts of attempted first degree murder, two counts of assault with a deadly weapon, and one count of being a felon in possession of a firearm. Speaking of irrationality, North Carolina man was critically injured. He almost died when his neighbor allegedly started shooting him and his poor little girl and some other children. Why did the neighbor start shooting the children and then the father? Why did he try to murder the little kids? Because their ball rolled into his yard. These little children were playing with a ball and the ball rolled into his yard, so he got a gun and tried to murder the children. Why did he do it? Well, he yelled, I don't even like white people. His name is Robert Lewis Singletary. He's 24 years old. Turned himself into authorities after he was on the lam for a couple of days and realized he was going to get caught. So he goes, he turns himself in. He fired at this poor little girl and her parents, White and Ashley Hildebrand, uh, after, after the ball rolled onto the property. So you white, I don't even like white people. I'm going to shoot your AWS. Uh, and then, according to the father, he fires three shots. He hasn't hit anybody yet. So I turn around and look. My daughter's right in front of me. I look and see he's pointing straight at my daughter. So this father just jumps and he gets shot and is critically injured. Uh, the daughter caught shrapnel in her cheek. But luckily, luckily, they, they seem to have lived. You almost certainly haven't heard about this story anywhere. Maybe on some conservative channel, but this sort of thing is suppressed. Obviously, it goes without saying, if the, if the races were reversed, then this would be a national news story. The president would give a speech about it. There would be a national conversation going on. There might be riots, but in this case, it's not. You know what, guys? Man, I totally agree with Michael Knowles on this. I do. You know, I think this was a, uh, a horrible racially motivated crime. I do. I do. But the only problem is they're the wrong color. The victims are the wrong color. And the shooter, he's the wrong color. You know, again, horrible racial crime, racially motivated crime, but the wrong color. You know, if they were black, I'm sure Ben Crump would be there. And where is Ben Crump? Well, he's down in Missouri. He's helping out the family of the black teen that was uh, that was shot by the homeowner for ringing the wrong doorbell. Yeah, he's there. And again, you know, I'm not saying that's right. You know, it was wrong. But do we know for a fact, for an absolute fact, that it was racially motivated? No, we don't. We don't know. Again, people can speculate all they want. But we truly don't know because the homeowner, he never stepped out there and said, I don't like black people. And again, they happened in this case. They came out there. They said they don't like white people, but it didn't happen the other way around. So we don't know if the, the homeowner in Missouri, if he would have done that with a white teenager, we don't really know. We're just kind of speculating that. He was racist. And I do understand that the um, the guy in Missouri, man, the, the white guy, 
We, I do understand the grandson got up there and said what he said. And I saw that interview. But again, we don't know the same way that we know here. But again, you know, if this family, if they, if they were uh, black and the shooter was white, yeah, Ben Crump, he'd be right there. But let me show you a clip from CNN talking about this. I think one of the things that stands out to me is that there is a racial component to this case. We've been hearing that from uh, Ralph's family. We've been hearing that from the attorneys representing that family, that they believe that this is racially motivated, that this 85-year-old white man purposely shot at Ralph Yarrow without any justification, simply because he was a young African-American boy uh, who was knocking on his door. And I think that's what's so tragic about this case. We've seen these amazing pictures of Ralph uh, just looks like an innocent kid who, whose only mistake was knocking on the wrong door. And because of the color of his skin, he's now in a hospital bed uh, fighting for his life. And I think that's the most appalling part of the story for me. Knocking on the wrong door, trying to pick up his siblings, just happened to be at the wrong house. Uh, Sergeant Dorsey, when you hear the prosecutor there talking about that racial component, uh, how much do you think that was a factor? Well, certainly it was a factor, but I mean, I, I would imagine they didn't think that they could prove that. And so they only want to bring those charges that they believe that they can prove. Uh, we we <laughs> undoubtedly believe that, you know, this, this old white man looked out his window, saw a young black kid and decided that black skin somehow was an imminent threat. Uh, he certainly, while he didn't have a duty to retreat, if he was really fearful, he could have. I mean, he's inside. The so-called imminent threat is outside. And so it's not reasonable to believe that um, deadly use of force was necessary. And so I'm happy that they brought the charges. I don't have a problem with the police department taking the time that was necessary to fortify those charges. We want to get it right. And sometimes you only get one bite at the apple. And so uh, I hope that they put this man in, in uh, custody real soon before another black person happens by his house and scares him. That's right. So guys, was there a racial component to this? Well, there could have been. There could have been. I'm not saying there wasn't. But we do know for an absolute fact there was in the other case. We do know. The uh, the person came out and said, I don't like white people. But again, in this case, the guy didn't say that. Now, I do understand that the guy's grandson went on TV and said, you know, he thought that his grandfather was racist. And again, the man may be. I'm not saying he's not. But we don't know for a fact. We don't know. I saw the interview as well with the grandson. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. But it could have been. Yeah, it could have been. There could have been a racial component to this. And I'm not saying it's not. And what happened was horrible. I mean, again, this kid ran the wrong doorbell. And for whatever reason, and again, I was not there. I do not know. But for whatever reason, the, the homeowner shot him. And again, would they have done the same thing if it was some white teenager? They could have. I don't think any of us truly know. Whether or not he would have been shot, he would have shot a uh, a white teenager. Again, this man lived for eighty some odd years without shooting anyone. So again, or or at least that we know of. So again, what what happened here? What happened here? Why was this happening? You know, I don't think any of us truly know at this point. Not until everything is out there, and again. Was the old man confused? Was the old man whatever? Again, it doesn't justify any of this. I'm not saying it does. But, again, we don't know. We don't know. And, again, we don't know if there's a racial component to it. But CNN, their headline, you know, is right there. They're saying there could have been. There probably was a racial component to it. And, again, man, that's the way they cover this. But there's nothing being said about the other, or very limited coverage, I should say, about the other. And we know for a fact 
there was a racial component. But so, where's Ben Crump? Where is Ben Crump? Where is Ben Crump for the white family? Again, we know where he is. He's down in Missouri. He's down to helping out that family. And again, I, I wish them well. I hope the, the kid's okay. I really do. You know, I hate to hear this, but you know, we, we got we got to understand that we know the other one definitely is racial. We know it is. So again, where's Ben Crump? Oh, that's right. It's you know the victims of the wrong color, and the uh, the um, the criminal man. He's the wrong color. So again, we understand why. We understand why Al Sharpton's not there. Why Ben Crump isn't there? We we get it. And we understand why Joe Biden is not making a speech or whatever rambling bullshit that he does. We understand why. We understand what is happening, what is going on. All right, guys, I'm going to go and cut the video right here. But if you would, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. Thanks. <laughs> You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...